When I was young, I lived on a farm in rural Oregon with my parents. I was an only child. We didn't have a big farm, or at least a commercial farm by their standards. It was only a family type standard. We had five cows, three horses, a small herd of goats, two dogs, and one chicken coop. We also had some Indian runner ducks that we kept for most part as pets. We didn't really make any money off the place per se, as just enough to sustain the animals and a little extra for ourselves. However, we were able to sustain enough to take a decent vacation every couple of years. Dad had another job in town as an insurance agent. He was only around, well, he was the only one around really. The town population was no more than eh, about 1,500 people. Mom gave horse riding lessons as well, and in short, we were rich, but we were comfortable. It was an easy life, or at least it could have been a lot worse. I went to school, dad went to work, mom took care of the animals, then we'd all have a great, lovely, warm dinner at night. And then I'd go to bed, mom and dad would have a beer or two, watch the news, or just maybe a movie if there happened to be one on the television. Sometimes at night, however, I'd hear things outside. Mostly just normal stuff. Cows or horses would get spooked by a coyote or something. I would hear dogs chasing rabbits, barking their goddamn heads off, making sleep near impossible. Every once in a great while, we would find a chicken dead, and Dad would always tell, tell me about it, but he never let me see the body, although I asked to frequently. He would keep me and Mom inside until he had gone out and did whatever he did with the body, throw sawdust over any blood, and then he would just go on with life as normal. I assumed it was foxes as I had seen a couple of them out by the pasture over the years slinking around back and forth through the grass. The summer when I was 10 years old, I remember helping my mom with the bedding of the horse dolls. Then. We heard a huge racket going on outside. You never heard the sound of a horse in pain, and trust me, you don't want to. It almost sounds like a large person screaming. Well, that's what we heard. And one of our horses, P Palomino, came running around the barn, and there's a wound on his left thigh. Four long marks, like claw marks, that ran across his body about a foot, had blood running down his leg, and he was limping. I was so scared by the sight of so much blood that Mom locked the house, well, the horse in its stall and made me go inside with one of the dogs. She told me to lock the door and stay inside until she came in to get me. I did. Eventually, Mom came inside and told me that the source had hurt itself on the barbed wire that ran to perimeter of the pasture. We owned more land beyond that, but it was mostly forested, and I, I guess I believed her at the time. But dinner that night, I noticed Dad being particularly quiet, and Mom was talking a lot more than she normally did. She was being really animated. And I noticed that Dad had gotten his rifle out and set, out, set it out by the door. Usually, he only did that when coyotes had been acting up. That night, I went to bed as normal. I had trouble falling to sleep as well, again, as normal. I turned on my desk lamp and decided to read a few comic books until I got a little bit more tired. I have very vivid memory of reading The Uncanny X-Men and then hearing back to the door open. Once I looked out, I could see my dad by the porch light, lighting a cigarette and holding his rifle under his arm. He started walking over to the driveway and then turned to follow the fence line. I couldn't sleep until I knew dad was back safe. I kept coming downstairs with the childish excuse of, well, I need to get some water, and when I went downstairs, I would see if my dad was back yet. In the house, at least. And each time, all I saw was Mom standing to catch the living room, staring at a blank TV screen, looking worried, sighing occasionally. Eventually, at about 4 in the morning, I think, Dad did come back, and I was so tired and relieved, I fell back as soon as he was home never told me what he did that night, and you know what, I, I never thought to ask. Two months later, I was back in school. It rains a lot in Oregon in the fall, and this day was no different. All I could hear from my bedroom was the rain hitting the ground and the aluminum roof of the chicken coop. <laughs> there was thunder in the distance, but it was slowly getting closer. I thought I heard a coyote yelping out in the garage, or it could have been a dog. 
I, I really couldn't tell from where I was at. So I looked out, straining my eyes to see whatever it may have been, and... In a brief, distant lightning flash, I saw something. It looked almost like a person, but hunched over, with an elongated torso. It was... tall. Taller than Dad, who was a good six foot four. At least, I, I just barely caught a glimpse of it near the side of the garage, but then faded. And... I didn't see it again that night. There was another dead chicken in the morning, the third in just as many weeks. I, t I told Dad what I've seen the previous night, and then the color went out of his cheeks momentarily, until he told me that the storm must have been playing tricks on me, and, you know, being young, I accepted that. Four months after that, we lost the cow. It was in the middle of the night, and we all woke up at the same time. There was a lot of noise in the pasture, and, but only briefly. A cry of a dying animal, and a primitive guttural yell that I've never heard in my entire life before. Dad rushed up into my room. I could hear him running up the stairs into my room, and this time he had a rifle on hand when he opened my door. He saw that I was awake and told me to stay inside, no matter what... <laughs> no, matter what I, no matter what I heard, no matter what I saw, I was to try and go back to sleep. I cannot say I was able to follow those orders. I, I have to say sleep wasn't exactly an option anymore. But I did stay in my room with a blanket held tight around my shoulders. And of course, I, I couldn't help but peep out the window. Probably about 10 minutes later, I heard gunshots in the field. I, I don't know what he was shooting at or whether it was the thing that attacked the cow or simply the cow itself to put the animal out of its misery. Dad rarely if ever talked about that night ever. I later found out that he had gotten to well I later found out that he had gotten to the cow to only find it ripped open on the ground, bleeding out from its torso. The shots I heard was it shooting the cow in the head to let it out of its misery. It kept going on like that for four years. Many years. A chicken, a duck here and there, something bigger was very rare. It, it sounded absurd, but I almost came to the conclusion that it was commonplace in farms. I only ever caught glimpses of the thing till what comes next. It terrifies me. It happened in the middle of one day, over the course of a long weekend when my parents had gone to Seattle to, Seattle to see my uncle, who was ill. It was on a Saturday afternoon. I was 17 years old and I was out in the barn putting out food for the horses and the dogs. The horses were running around in the pasture, and the dogs were asleep in the corner of one of the horse's stalls. That's when I heard something rustling in the tall grass outside of the pasture. The dogs looked around, and a little bit, but I didn't see into mine. I assumed it was just one of the horses waiting for me, and to, well, leave so they could eat. I kept going around and about what I was doing, and in several minutes, I thought I heard a light breathing sound. I turned to look, and... It was standing in the door, tall as hell, hunched over, and fucking the sun streaming in behind it, light was all up, dust in the air around it like some type of sticky halo. It was looking at me, considering me. Maybe it was trying to decide whether or not I was food. I remember swearing loudly and then turning and running as fast as I fucking could from the house, not even thinking, panic causing my legs to move as fast as they possibly could. It was behind me. Not even breathing hard, I heard its feet hitting the ground in a consistent rhythm. I, I got to the house and I opened the door and slammed it behind me and locked it as fast as I could. I tore through the house, locking every goddamn door I could possibly see, the, drawing the blinds on every window. I, I could hear it snarling outside by the back door, the dogs barking at it, but they wouldn't have tried to attack this damn thing. It was too big and they knew it. It roared at the dogs and they ran off, probably hid in the pasture or in the barn somewhere. I ran into my parents' bedroom and got my dad's rifle. I loaded it and then sat up in the chair in the living room, facing the back door. And then I waited. Oh, I waited. It started prowling around the house like some type of conniving creature. I could hear its feet crunching on the gravel of the driveway and of the wooden planks on the back deck. It kept walking back and forth and I thought about trying to look through the window to see it, but I was far too scared. Eventually, after hours, I was hoping it would go away, and then the sun went down. 
I turned on all the outside lights and then went up to my room and opened the window with the rifle in my hand, hoping to pick off the damn thing from above. I saw it lurking beyond the glow of the porch like It had long, swiney arms, and it walked on a bent knee. It was by the chicken coop. Then, it disappeared from view. I heard the chicken squawking and screeching for a moment, then the damn thing reappeared with a bloody chicken in hand. It bit off one of the wings of its jaws and were dripping with slime and drool or whatever the hell the thing was drooling. I, I can't even tell what the hell that substance was. <sighs> and then let the dead bird drop to the ground at its feet. It then looked at me. His eyes made contact with mine. And then I turned away again back to chickens. It came back with another bird and then mutilated it in front of me. Then dropped it again. And again, and again, and again. I should have taken a shot at it, but I was astounded and confused trying to figure out what in the hell it was doing to me. me. Then it hit me. This was a display of power. It was showing me that it was stronger than me, that it could do whatever it pleases. And I couldn't do anything to stop it. A at the same time, I felt I was powerless and sickened and... Powerless because what it was saying was true and... If that thing was, and just that thing and me, I, I wouldn't stand a chance. And then singing because I realized what kind of intelligence it would have needed to possess to convey such a message. The thought shocked me out of my stupor. Then I remembered a rifle by my side. I was heading, it was heading back to the chickens. And then I decided when it came back, I would take my shot. It strode back to the porch, almost arrogant, walking on a bent knee with those arms that were so long that the chicken was nearly dragging on the ground. I raised my rifle to my eye. I tried to steady myself. My heart was beating so hard that I could hear the rifle, feel the rifle shaking ever so slightly with the rhythm of each heartbeat. I could hear pounding in my own ears. It raised the body, it raised its body to its mouth, just as it was about to put the chicken's head in size. I, I squeezed it, I squeezed the trigger, and then the crack of the gun echoed and shattered the quiet of the nighttime standoff. And then I heard its loud howl. A painful, loud, startled howl. Just on the outside of his shoulder, it ran off into the night, and I never saw it again. But <laughs> it, it, it was still out there, though. It, it still killed chickens and other things more often than it did before. I'm writing this all now because... My parents died three weeks ago. They were killed in a collision with a drunk driver. He survived and they left me to farm. And I intended to live here with my own family. I'm now 32 and I work for an Oregon Fish and Game office in Salem. I I'm married to a wonderful woman named Stephanie. We have our own son, Zachary, who is four years old, and we're expecting a daughter in about four months. I came to the farmhouse alone today. I told Steph that I just wanted some time in my parents' house to deal with some emotions, and of course, she was very understanding. I came back to claim what was rightfully mine, my dad's rifle. Next to me on the table, almost dust covered it. I also brought several portable hollow lights to set up around the house, and my own shotgun. I was borrowing a handgun from Joe, a, a guy from the fishing game who I worked with, and when I'm done typing this account uh, of my own memories, I'll print it out and then leave it on the dining room table, along with my wedding ring and a key to safe deposit box where my will is kept. Everything is loaded when I'm ready, and hopefully... I will return here to collect these things, and nobody will ever know I wrote this. Steph, in the event that your unfortunate soul finds us, which I'm terrified to think is unlikely outcome, I thought that having that the thought of ha you, the thought of you having to go alone hurts me more than anything else in this world ever can. Know that I love you more than anything, and I hope you understand why I am doing this to keep you and Zachary safe. I love you. You can only hope that you grow up to be good and kind-hearted and strong like the man like your grandfather was. And to my unborn daughter, if I don't live long enough to meet you, it will be the single greatest regret of my life. Tell the police of, and tell the fish and game to call Joe one of the few people who knows about this. Make the situation known, and eventually somebody will kill it, even if it isn't me. 
And if you're reading this on some other outlet, it's also in my instructions to post this on social media outlets. <sighs> to this day, this thing terrifies me more than anything I've ever seen. Long, elongated arms and... It, it, it fucking furless, like... It wasn't like a werewolf, but however, it had the muscular... Ugh. I can't think anymore about this. I better go.